Hello creative cooks, welcome or welcome back to another episode of the Creative Phoebe Cooks channel. I'm your host Phoebean and today we'll be making a plant-based yogurt. One of my most highly requested videos and I'm excited to show you how I do it in the most comprehensive format. I'll be using the walnut sunflower milk recipe I uploaded a few weeks ago as the yogurt base in this episode and sharing a lot of tips throughout this video like how to crack a coconut for the yogurt culture, making sure your yogurt is free from mold, creating the right environment for fermentation and much more. By the way, this yogurt has no trace of gluten, probiotic pills or dairy. So if you subscribe to a gluten-free, vegan and dairy-free diet, this recipe video is for you. As always, find a full recipe and a list of the equipment you need for this recipe on my blog using one of the links in the description box below. And with that, let's start making a batch of this delicious walnut sunflower yogurt. To begin, you'll need to process some coconut milk to create the yogurt culture. Get a fully matured coconut that has a good amount of water in it and crack it using a hammer, then further break it up into smaller pieces. I'm using coconut because it's one of the most purest forms of fruits, also known as droops, similar to cashews, which are also known as droops, that has a hard shell protecting its contents to keep it from being adulterated, especially if you have as the coconut flesh and water yourself, which we'll be doing first. And if you're new to coconuts and curious about making the right pick for a recipe, I've included a link below showing you my top tips when shopping for coconuts. And I hope you find that helpful. Once you're done breaking the coconut into smaller pieces, remove the coconut meat from the shell by using a paring knife, like so. Then wash and cut the coconut into strips and measure out 90 grams for this recipe. Snack on the rest because coconut is not a nut. It's actually a fruit with good sugars, oils and provides a host of healthy nutritional benefits for you. Then save the coconut shell for crafts or to start a fire. It's a wooden material. I have the full breakdown for making coconut milk in my cookbook Eat Joyfully paired with a weekly planner for you which you can get right away to make some coconut milk and use in any of the recipes that call for milk. Use the link below to get your copies. Add a coconut strips in warm water to a sterilized blender and pulverize until the coconut pieces are well broken down. Be sure to sterilize all the tools and equipment you'll be using to make this yogurt. That way it can reduce the chances of mold growing at any step during the process. Now strain the coconut milk into a clean sterilized jar using a fine mesh sieve or a nut milk bag and set aside. I've included a link to my favorite nut milk bag below, especially if this is something that you need as an essential tool to use in your kitchen for a variety of your recipes, like straining vegetable stock. All right, now we're gonna slice a lemon in half and add it to the coconut milk. This will encourage the coconut milk to curdle and cause the coconut cream to rise above the water content which we'll use to make our yogurt. All right, lightly secure this jar with a lid, not closed. Leave it on their kitchen counter or the dark cupboard to ferment for about 18 to 24 hours while wrapped in a warm opaque cloth to minimize light exposure. About two to three hours before the end of the fermentation period of the coconut milk, we'll make the yogurt base by referencing the walnut sunflower milk recipe from my Better Ingredients, Better Recipes video, where I also shared a foolproof recipe for oat flour and nut butter, 
literally the creamiest nut butter ever so i've included a link below so you can watch it and prioritize these staples in your diet as needed compared to the milk recipe will increase the amount of each element needed to generate more volume that means we'll combine 80 grams of walnuts 60 grams of sunflower seeds and 55 grams of pitted mejou dates in a mixing bowl if you have deglet dates that also works well whatever date you have as long as they're pitted then pour some boiled water over them till they're well submerged and allow to soak for about 30 to 40 minutes the dates provide high fiber and natural sugars for the bacteria of the yogurt culture to feed upon while the walnuts and sunflower seeds have high in magnesium and potassium as well as healthy dietary fiber all great for a happy gut system in the absence of using walnuts and flower seeds you may prefer coconuts almonds cashews chickpeas for more protein and so on for me i'm curious about how this recipe will turn out if i use coconut or chickpeas to make the milk base what are your thoughts on this after soaking the strained elements, add them to a sterilized blender together with cassava flour and water. And blend for one to two minutes until all the elements are well pulverized. I opted to add cassava flour as a natural thickener for this yogurt as it is made from the entire cassava root, maintaining its high fiber content. Instead of tapioca starch, which is derived from the starchy part of the cassava plant, leaving out the fiber. Now, you may be tempted to use oat flour, but hear me out. I will not suggest it because the last time I fermented oats, I produced so much gas that I had to be careful about my whereabouts and I wouldn't want that for you. It was quite unpleasant. So I say give this cassava flour a try. You can also use it to make a delicious stack of plantain flatbread which is so good they're perfect to make and freeze ahead of time for easy meal prep or you can make these nut free and gluten free pear and ginger cupcakes and bread of course i've linked my favorite cassava flour brand below to make it easy on you as well as links to these recipes i just mentioned then without straining it pour the contents in a clean stock pot and turn heat to medium. This is a sustainable way to use every bit of the ingredients, especially the fiber content, instead of discarding them. Bring the milk base to a simmer for 10 to 11 minutes, stirring consistently with a wooden spoon or a whisk to prevent lumps from forming or content sticking to the bottom of the pot. And though I've not tried it yet, if you have arrowroot powder on hand, you may use it too, since cassava and arrowroot have similar thickening properties. So let me know how that works out for you. Once the milk base is done cooking and achieved a good level of thickness, turn off the heat and transfer all the contents to a glass container. Then place its lid on without closing it and set aside to cool until it's warm and cozy to the touch. If it's still hot, let it rest a bit until it's warm. Now, a thermometer will be suitable for this step, but in the absence of it, use your intuition like I did. About this time, the fermentation period of the coconut milk is complete. The coconut cream has risen to the top, leaving the water content below. Observe it closely to ensure that there is no mold, then do a sniff test before you add it to the warm milk base. It should have a fruity and sour scent. If it smells like bad, bad food or the garbage, toss it and start again. After you've saved your milk base in the fridge, you can continue from then on. Now, if it's all good, which I really hope it is, scoop a tablespoon of the coconut cream and add it to the warm walnut sunflower milk base. Stir well and place a lid on the container without closing it shut. Then place the container of the walnut sunflower milk base in the oven with a light on for 11 to 13 hours to create a warm environment for the yogurt fermentation to process. 
Now, since this is a long waiting process, I suggest you plan for these fermentation processes to occur overnight to prevent any cause that may interrupt the fermentation process. Now we are so close to being done and if you've watched this far, I really appreciate you. I hope you're getting a lot of value from this video and you just look at this video as a form of experimentation. The goal is not to be perfect, the goal is just to be creative, which is why I call all of us creative cooks. So just enjoy the process and even if you mess up, that's fine. I messed up a few times before getting the right recipe. And who knows, I might cook this recipe in the future. And truly, if you're getting a lot of value from this video, please give it a thumbs up so that other viewers can find it easily through the magic of the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. Now, once the yoga fermentation process is completed, watch for bubbles. This is, uh, if you have kids, I think they'll be so fascinated with this whole process of how bacteria interacts with food healthy bacteria of course now watch for these bubbles to confirm fermentation activity and ensure that there is no mold and of course like the coconut yogurt culture we're gonna sniff this one just to make sure it's good now when you sniff it you'll get a nutty slightly fruity and a sour scent because it's slightly acidic if you prefer your yogurt to have a lighter consistency your yogurt is ready you can stir it and you're good to go however if you prefer to have a thicker consistency which is what i opted for prepare a bowl and sieve with a sterilized nut milk bag or cheesecloth line in the sieve and pour the yogurt in the nut milk bag or cheesecloth then wrap it up and store in the fridge for two to four hours or overnight to strain the yogurt You may also keep the yogurt culture in the fridge to use again within a week. Now that the yogurt has strained, it will feel a bit grainy due to all the fiber content from the pulverized elements. Hence, if you prefer a smoother consistency, blend it on high for a minute or until ultra smooth, depending on your blender. I left mine as is because I serve the texture of this homemade yogurt. Very different from what I'm used to from the store-bought version. Store the strained and or blended yogurt in a glass, metal or clay container instead of a plastic one and consume within three to four days. Now if this is your first time eating a homemade fermented food like this yogurt, I'd highly advise that you drink some water before consuming it so it doesn't upset your throat and overall gut system because that will not be cool. You may also use a spoonful of this yogurt as a culture in place of the coconut based culture for subsequent batches of yogurt. Or share with a friend who needs some as you would with sourdough culture. Now. The time you've all been waiting for, how does it look, how do I serve this? I'm having this walnut and sunflower yogurt with a few slices of kiwi. It's spring. Let's bring in all those greens and enjoy all this freshness. I'm going to add in some toasted coconut shreds and a drizzle of honey. You may serve some of your new yogurt batch as a substitute for a cheese spread on a slice of bread as a cool topping for a warm bowl of oatmeal like the oat and red lentil porridge I shared last week or as an extra protein or healthy fats for chia pudding. The possibilities are endless. I can't wait for you to make this yogurt soon and so excited to read your comments on it below. And that's it for today Creative Cooks on making your own dairy free, gluten free and ultra based yogurt using walnuts and sunflower seeds. Thank you so much for watching and talk to you in the next one. Take care of your healthy selves and happy spring. <laughs> Goodbye.